You know, we're always reviewing apps. Today, why don't we just review an entire app store? Wait, wait what? There's, a, there's another Android app store? What are we gonna do with our app store? This episode of App Judgment is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook at www.audiblepodcast.com slash appjudgment. Welcome to App Judgment, your source for mobile phone app news and reviews. My name is Chris Jennings. From the very infancy of the Android OS, one of the strongest criticisms has been against the marketplace. Since day one, Google has had to live up to the experience Apple created with its iTunes App Store. Let's face it, even die-hard Android fans can agree that Apple created something the average user found easy to use and it did a solid job of organizing apps and making them easy to find. The Android marketplace simply didn't do these things. If you knew the exact name of the app you were looking for, it could usually be found. And yes, Google did recently upgrade their marketplace and finally gave it a URL and an easy way to share apps and organize their categories. But in my opinion, it was still lacking. Well, luckily for Google, their pals at Amazon have stepped in to help them out by announcing the Amazon App Store for Android. This is a free download that acts as your gateway to the land of both free and paid apps. So Amazon has put their spin on Android's marketplace, but what exactly does that mean for the user? First things first, how do you get a new App Store app? Do you download an App Store app from your previously installed app store? N no, that would be ridiculous. You need to go to the Amazon site on your computer and click the Amazon App Store link. It'll ask for your Amazon login credentials and then send you an email or text that you need to open up on your phone. That installs like any other app would and remains saved on your phone with all of your other apps. So now you have your new App Store on your phone, but what are you going to do with it? Well, we'll dive right in after we thank our sponsors. So Stephanie, you know I'm always out and about, I'm non-stop, I can't stop, I don't have time to read books, but I found out that I do have time to read books because if I'm out and about with headphones in my ears all the time, I can listen to audiobooks from Audible. Right. And there's a book that I've been meaning to read for a long time, I finally got to be able to start doing it, uh, from a friend of mine named Andy Smith and his wife who wrote a book called The Dragonfly Effect. And it's really cool, it's all about uh, how someone who doesn't have any power, any money can affect social good, it can affect change through social media, through real stories, uh, it's really cool. Does this sound pretty cool? We yeah. probably get like a a lot more running mileage out of listening to audiobooks, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I run and I just listen to books. I keep running yeah. and running because I want to keep listening to the story. Yeah, I know. So what I do when passing the time on long road trips is also listen to audiobooks. Um, I recently downloaded the, gr uh, the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo onto my iPhone and then I hooked it up to the car stereo and man, it just made my trip so much faster. <laughs> And so, if you want to download either a girl with a dragon tattoo or... Or the, or the dragonfly effect, or, mm -hmm. as I might have said, any of the 75,000 yeah. titles across so many genres. Any genre you can think of. You've got fiction, nonfiction, fiction uh, history, uh, drama, comedy, business. You name it. Chances are, if there's a book you're interested in, there's a solid chance it's available as an audiobook through right. audible.com. Right, and if you go to audiblepodcast.com slash appjudgment, you can get a free audiobook download of your choice when you sign up today. So go give it a shot yeah. and see the revolution in listening to audiobooks. Welcome back. Let's check out our newly installed Amazon App Store, shall we? Right off the bat, you'll notice a cleaner, more intuitive layout than the Android Marketplace. You're presented with 10 different categories of apps, ranging from new and most downloaded to all different genres, and finally, apps specifically recommended for you based on the ones you've already downloaded. At the top, you have a simple search bar that acts much like the search bar you'd see when searching for any other product on Amazon. Search results come back quickly, and you're able to sort through the results in a few different categories. It can really come in handy if you only want, say, free apps released in the past 30 days that have a rating higher than three stars. It's really cool stuff. Back on the home page, just below the search bar, is the feature that excites me the most about Amazon's App Store, the free paid app of the day. That's right, every day Amazon selects an app that normally would cost a few bucks and decides to just give it away for nothing. And we're not talking far out there apps that only have a niche audience. We're talking apps from major developers that have included SwiftKey, SoundHound, and the always popular games Doodle Jump and Angry Birds. What makes this especially interesting is that these same apps can still be downloaded from the regular Android marketplace if you want, but they'll cost you money over there. Amazon is banking that the popularity will remain and people will still pony up the cash. One other thing that Amazon has brought to the world of Android apps is its renowned customer service and community feedback. 
finally, you can read some helpful comments about apps that are more than three words long and actually give you some insight. And if you're having trouble with an app, you no longer have to rely solely on the developer. You can email Amazon directly and they can help get to the bottom of things. Rounding out the features under the menu section are quick access to the apps you've already downloaded, recommended apps, categories, and then the opportunity to take advantage of the aforementioned customer service and feedback. So there you have it, an app review of an app store that is technically still an app itself. Obviously, you can tell I'm pretty keen on this one, but let's check out the pros and cons. Pros, Amazon has easily improved upon the overall Android app purchasing experience. They made it easier to find what you need, even if you don't know what you need. The customer service and community feel that we've grown to love from Amazon has been incorporated into the world of app downloads, and this is a huge plus. And really, the biggest pro of all, free apps, free premium apps that you will actually use. That alone really sells itself. But let's face it, no app is all smiles and rainbows, right? What sucks about this thing? Well, the fact that's maybe just another app store, that could be redundant to some people. It's another app store that doesn't even include all of the apps that the original marketplace has. So if you're looking for obscure fart apps, this isn't the place. Amazon is keeping things classy. Sadly, users with Android phones on AT&T will have to sit this one out for now. Don't ask me why, or it could lead to a whole debate about carrier-specific apps and restrictions that we just don't have time for right now. And finally, something that isn't a deal breaker, but it's just plain annoying. If you install a bunch of apps through the Amazon App Store and then decide that you want to delete the app, the apps you downloaded through it stop working. Kind of fishy, right? What's up with that, Amazon? So once you wrap your head around the idea of another app store, you should really go ahead and download this app. At the very least, you can score some premium free apps that would normally drain your wallet. And I have a feeling that we haven't seen the last of this Amazon infringement on Google's Android turf. Let's keep our eyes on this one. Once again, I am Chris Jennings. Thanks for watching. What are your thoughts on another app store? Love it? Hate it? Still confused by it? Well, just because the episode's over doesn't mean we have to stop talking about it. You can argue with me personally via Twitter at Jennings Christ or send the App Judgment crew a shout on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our home base at revision3.com.